Hola, yo soy señor Norton y estamos aquí con otra lección para el español 2. In this lesson, we're going to be talking more about the preterite. We talked about the preterite in the last lesson, the preterite being the past tense for actions that, bam, are completed in the past. In this lesson, we're going to um, still do an introduction, but it's just a couple of slightly irregular verbs in the preterite. First, let's do a quick reminder, a quick refresher of what the preterite is. The preterite is used to describe actions that were completed in the past. It's a past tense. So once again, when we talk about preterito, um, we're talking about a past tense for actions that have a specific beginning, specific end in the past. Not things that used to be, not things that were going on, but bam, happened in the past. Okay, um, it's similar to conjugating present tense verbs, where you take your infinitive, you drop your AR, ER, or IR ending, then you add a new ending. For example, hablar is an AR verb, and oh, by the way, there's um, there is no stem changing in the preterite. Generally speaking, we've, we've got some irregular verbs where the stem changes slightly, but we'll deal with those later. Okay, so let's go to AR verbs. So if we have an AR verb like hablar, we'll drop that AR, and then we'll add these endings that you see here. You hablé, I talked. Tu hablaste, you talked. Él habló, he talked. Ella habló, she talked. Nosotros hablamos, we talked. Vosotros hablasteis, if you're in Spain, um, talking to a group of friends or something, you guys talk, or ellos hablaron, they talked, or you guys talked in those days. For example, we would take hablar, put it into a mini conversation, and we might have something like this. ¿Hablaste con Paco? Sí, hablé con él. As in, yo hablé con él. ¿Y Paco compró la camisa? No, no compró la camisa. Now let's make sure we understand that. ¿Hablaste con Paco? Did you speak with Paco? Sí, hablé con él. Yes, I spoke with him. ¿Y Paco compró la camisa? And Paco bought the shirt? No, no compró la camisa. No, he did not buy the shirt. Okay, one last time, now that you understand it, let's go through it one more time quickly. ¿Hablaste con Paco? Sí, hablé con él. ¿Y Paco compró la camisa? No, no compró la camisa. Okay, there's a quick sample of the AR verbs. Now let's check ERs and IRs. ERs and IRs have the same, same endings. They share the same endings. Uh, e, este, yo, imos, yero. Once again, e, este, yo, imos, yero. Again, e, este, yo, imos, yero. Don't forget the accents in the yo, el, 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 usted form. Same thing over here on AR verbs. Don't forget the accents on the yo, and the el, el, usted form. Okay, back to ERs and IRs. Uh, for example, a verb like comer, that means to eat. Who ate my empanada? Oh, I'm sorry, let's, let me do it first in Spanish. ¿Quién comió mi empanada? Yo no comí tu empanada. Entonces, ¿quién la comió? Paco comió tu empanada. Él compró una camisa y comió tu empanada anoche. So who ate your empan my empanada? The empanada, by the way, you should um, check it out, search for it. Uh, Argentine empanadas, fantastic. Son fantásticas. Uh, perdón, fantásticas. ¿Quién comó, comió mi empanada? Yo no comí tu empanada. Entonces, I'm sorry, I did not eat. It's the yo form. Yo no comí tu empanada. Entonces, ¿quién la comió? So, or therefore, who ate it? That la is an indirect object pronoun. We'll talk about that soon enough. ¿Quién la comió? Paco ate your empanada. Paco comió tu empanada. Él compró una camisa y comió tu empanada. Okay, now um, let's go to some slightly irregulars. That's just a quick review of the preterite. Let's go to some slightly irregulars. And I say slightly because some of them, they're not too irregular. But the first one we have here is ver, ver to see. Think of vision, ver, that is to see. So why is it irregular? Well, it's barely irregular. It's only irregular because it doesn't have accents. It's a little one syllable word. We don't really need accents on it. So we've got Vi, viste, vio, vimos, viste, se vieron. It's just like the ER, IR endings. So it's looking good, just no accents needed. Vi, viste, vio, vimos, vieron. Okay, the second set, and these are ones we'll spend a couple more minutes on. Car, gar, and czar verbs. So verbs that end in car, gar, or czar. Like buscar, um, entregar, pagar, and um, let's see, czar, words like Almorzar, to eat lunch. 
um, almorzar, empezar, to begin, to start. Those are all going to have slight spelling changes, but uh, they're only to keep the pronunciation normal, and it only happens in the yo form. Let me show you what, what I'm talking about here. Let's take uh, the verb buscar. Buscar, no, normally it would be B-U-S-C-E, but if we leave it C-E, then that C takes on the sound like cero. So when a C comes before an E, it takes on a S or a th sound instead of the keeping the K that you normally hear. In order to maintain the K sound, we're going to change that C to a Q-U. So yo busqué, tú buscaste, él buscó, looked for, searched for, nosotros buscamos. Okay, so you see all these other endings, they're normal. It's just in the yo form. Car, the C in car changes to a Q U. Yo okay. busqué mis llaves. I look for my keys. Q U E. So that's car. Gar, like pagar or entregar. Pagar. You'll see once again, it's totally normal in everything except for the yo form. The reason is um, if we don't add that U after the G, it takes on more of a Sound like Jorge, hey, Jorge. We don't want to say Paje, we want to say Page. We want to actually close the throat there and make it Page. We call it occlusive. So Page. Page, paga, pagaste, pago. Yo pagué 10 dólares. I paid. Changes from a G to a GU. And the last of those three, the czars, like empezar, almorzar. You see in this one, everything once again is normal, except for the yo form. Changes to a C and they say. Because remember, after if a C is followed with an E, it takes on that S sound. So that's it. Um, card, gar, and czar, just a spelling change to maintain the pronunciation in the yo form. And pesar turns to a C we mentioned. Okay, let's wrap this up with a little prueba. Little prueba. A qué hora, and we're going to use the verb almorzar. A qué hora blank tú con Fernanda ayer? At what time did you eat lunch with Fernanda ayer, yesterday? So it would be a qué hora. Okay, I hope you put almorzaste. At what time did you eat lunch? A qué hora almorzaste tú con Fernanda ayer? Now let's see somebody's reply. And we're going to put it in the yo form. Fernanda no ate lunch conmigo, pero yo ate lunch a las doce y diez. What puts in our blanks? Fernanda no almorzó conmigo, pero yo almorcé, changes to a C, a las doce y diez. Let's try another. This time we're going to use pagar. Tú compraste mucha ropa. ¿Cómo? How did you pay? ¿Cómo? ¿Con tarjeta de crédito? Okay. Where did we put the blank? How did you pay? ¿Cómo pagaste? The response. Claro que no. Of course not. Claro que no. Yo paid con dinero en efectivo. What was in the blank? Did you get the spelling change? Yo pagué, G-U-E, con dinero en efectivo. Okay, and that's it. So you guys, that's just a quick review of the spell change, irregular preterites, cargarzar, verbs, and ver without the accents. That's it, that's this whole lesson. Now if you're one of my students, you've got an assignment to do. I want you to write three sentences with car, gar, and zar verbs can use the verbs from this lesson, or if you can think of another one, welcome to use them. Our gardens are, or there, so you'll use three of any of those verbs to write sentences in the yo form and the preterite. So something in the yo form, past tense, with either a verb that ends in cargar or zar, or the verb ver. Y eso es todo. Gracias por escuchar. Nos vemos.